welcome to I and I Studio 2023 New Year's Edition. So today I want to talk a little bit about New Year's resolutions. And we all make resolutions um, in our personal lives. I know I do every year. Um, but what is your art resolution this year? How is your art going to be different? What, what commitments are you going to make to your art? Uh, it could be something like, I want to be in the studio five days a week. Um, I want to paint larger. Uh, I want to paint, uh, put more time into each of my works. There's a lot of things that we can think about with our art for a new year. Um, maybe it's a theme. What are we going to paint about this year? For me, I am getting ready for a show in November, which seems like forever, but believe me, it will be here before you know it. So I have this series of flowers that I'm doing, and I think I will stay in the flower theme for the show. Um, and I have almost completed my panel series and I have a couple of stretcher bars to stretch that are fairly good size and I'm going to complete those as well. So I'm going to have a, a body of large work uh, floral with a lot of tension and a lot of flow in it. And beyond that, I'm thinking of paper. And the reason is I'm running into a storage situation. Um, you just can't keep painting and painting and painting and putting the, the work in racks unless you have unlimited space, which I don't. And I do have quite a lot of work stored in racks. So a teacher of mine, Fred Martin, at some point in his life switched to paper. And that way you can frame it as needed for particular shows that you may be in. Otherwise, you can keep it in flat files or boxes or other storage devices that are a little easier than the many racks that I have. So I don't know enough about paper. I know there are beautiful papers that can give us many, many, many types of effects. And um, I was looking on Instagram the other day and another teacher of mine is doing some work on Gampy paper and it looks like it's layered. So I can see almost shadows through the layers of paper. And I know other artists that work that way and I love that. It's like instead of layering with glazes of paint. You can layer with the paper itself. And I do that on my paintings because they are mixed media and I like transparent papers. Um, and I'm going to do a little demonstration today about transparent papers and what can, what you can bring up underneath the paper. So um, I'm not a complete stranger to this. But um, I'm open to the possibility of working more on paper in 2023. So for the first couple of months, I'm going to finish out my large um, panels, my large canvases, and then I'm going to make a little bit of a shift into paper and see where that may lead me. Um, as far as themes of the work, I really love the tension that's created in my work um, by the lines, the relationships of the uh, forms to one another. Um, we have a lot of tension in our world, but I don't think the tension has to be a negative thing. Um, there's a lot of tension in na uh, nature, the way that branches reach uh, to each other. Um, silhouettes uh, with the moon in the in the in the background, creating a beautiful tension of movement. Let's talk about paper. 
as I think about my New Year's resolution to work on paper, I start pulling some things out of my storage and realizing I use a lot of paper. Um, and I probably know more about paper than I think I know. Um, there's always a lot to learn and paper is fantastic. There's so much. Um, I brought a bunch of paper back from China. This yellow, pale yellow that you see on the surface of this is not a paint wash. It's a layer of very thin paper. And I'm going to demonstrate how I did that so that um, you can also layer with paper. First of all, many paper is transparent when it's applied. And especially if it's applied with um, polymer medium on the surface of the painting, then the paper, then the polymer medium on the top. This is a bold mark that I made on a panel. And I want this white to be that delicate soft yellow. This is a beautiful, probably a mulberry paper that I actually carried back from China. I have a little bit of this paper left, not much. I don't know where to find it, wish I could. Um, can't see through it. You don't see my hand behind it. But let's see how transparent it looks on the panel when I put it down. Okay, so I've got my paper. I have my panel. And I'm going to adhere it with just a, uh, a fluid matte medium, polymer medium, matte or gloss. I'm going to choose matte today. And I'm going to just pour medium right on the panel. And I'm going to use a four inch uh, putty knife to spread it. This takes a little practice. If you get too much, it tends to tear the paper uh, and not enough. The paper tends to not stick. So you want an even, thin coat. And because I'm doing the whole surface, I want to get it all on the entire surface. And that looks pretty good. I put it and I'm sliding it into place a little bit. Whoops. You can see I ripped a corner. That's okay. I'm smoothing it out with my hand. I have some wrinkles. I'll deal with those later. I'm going to leave them because chances are I'll put paint over it and when I sand the wrinkles will become important. I can see and feel that I have pretty good adhesion. And there are still some bubbles down. What I'm going to do next is put another layer of this medium on. Use my putty knife and coat it. And you can see when I coat it, it becomes more transparent. So that's how you can create color with paper. So my gestural mark is still there. It's um, not quite as defined as it was because the paper going over it obscures it away like atmosphere obscures the horizon line. When you look out on the horizon, your colors get a little faded just like has happened here. This is a step in the process, one step on the way. It's certainly not the finished product.
The next thing that I want to show you is taking a piece of transparent paper. This was some kind of a packing paper that came in a box. Um, shoes are often wrapped in this paper and I love the way this paper looks, feels, and crinkles. What I've done to the paper is a jelly print and I love the way it looks like branches. So I have another one of these panels with a gestural mark and I'm simply going to put this paper on top to create color, transparency of the gesture coming through, texture that I can later paint over. So let's give it a go. Again, pouring on my matte medium, polymer medium matte. I have this little pool up here of the excess. I'm going to scrape that over the top of the paper. This always makes the paper a bit more transparent. And I find if I do this when the paper is still wet from collaging it on, I think it brings the transparency up more than if I let it dry and come back and go over the top. This is very wrinkly, which I think is fantastic. Because when I paint over this, if I paint over it, this wrinkle pattern will be beautiful underneath the paint if I sand it. So, this is what you get. I love the way the negative space here creates the form of branches. And I think this turned out really quite beautifully. Again, it's just a step in the process. It isn't the end result. Okay, for my third demo today, I'm gonna take a piece of collage paper, and this is something that I purchased in my local art store. It's a beautiful piece of paper, um, fairly thick. Again, it has a transparency to it when it's wet, um, and it has a bit of a texture. This paper may have been stamped with something because it does have a bit of a texture, sort of like I get when I use my stencil. So I'm going to attach this. I haven't quite decided where. The same way I've been attaching everything with my polymer medium. I didn't get enough in the corner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of lift it. This is a thick paper. I can lift it. It's not going to tear like the thinner paper that I used before. I have too much medium and it puddled over here and you can see in the puddle that it uh, this paper has run and dyed the medium. I'm going to just wipe that away. I don't need it. There. Now, because this looks like a piece of paper that I bought and I don't really want it to look that way, I'm going to pour some paint over it. I've chosen a color that's similar to the background of this and I'm going to scrape the paint over the top. And remember how I said it's somewhat textural. So as I scrape it through, the design comes through. 
but it comes through um, in a more disguised manner, I could say. So, I think I'll go a little bit thicker on this side too. I love that edge. Thought I'd leave that. Okay. And you can fool around with how much of this design you want to show through. It looks pretty good. Okay. So that's three ways that you can apply paper to your panels, to your paintings. Um, and I imagine when I'm working with just paper, uh, there will be different challenges like how the paper will buckle when I do things like this. What kind of paper should be the base paper? Um, what kind of paper should I put on the top? These are questions that I don't have an answer to yet. I'll find out as I go along, and um, they say mistakes are the best way for us to make good art, and that the mistakes are where the growth happens, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen in 2023. I hope you are too. Happy New Year. Go to the studio. Make it a practice. Practice makes perfect. See you later.